Thank you for joining us. Here's a little bit of information about the University of Arizona Health Sciences. It talks about all of our different colleges that we have at both of our campuses. And here are our beautiful campuses, both in Tucson and our biomedical campus up in Phoenix. We are led by the wonderful Dr. Michael Dake. He is our Senior Vice President for Health Sciences. And here's all of our social media accounts. We really love to have you follow us. Please follow me, A. Medina Wildcat, on Twitter. And when you post, please post with hashtag Wellness Wednesdays AZ. I'm Anne Marie Medina. I am the Director of Corporate and Community Relations here in the Tucson campus. And we also have Caroline Berger, who serves in that position up at our Phoenix campus, and Allison Otu, who is our Executive Director. We'd love to hear from you, so please drop us a line anytime. Let us know what we're doing well and anything that you would like to see coming up. Today, we have a wonderful presenter who's going to be talking for about 20 minutes. We'll also have time for questions at the end. So as we're going along, please drop those questions in the chat box. Just click that box at the bottom of your screen. We'll try and get to all of those questions. If for some reason we don't, we'll make sure and follow up in an email with any of those that uh, we leave unanswered. Don't forget, be on that lookout for our post-event email. We'll send you all the links to the resources that our presenter discusses. We'll also include a link to that short two-minute event evaluation. We really appreciate that feedback. We also will include the links to today's recording and all of our previous recordings so that you can catch up on any that you might have missed. So please allow me to introduce our speaker for today. Molly Burke joined the Andrew Weil Center for Integrative Medicine at the University of Arizona in February of 2000. She's enjoyed being a part of all aspects of creating and delivering online educational offerings. As the Director of Online Education since 2012, she works with program directors, faculty, and the development team to design, create, improve, and maintain the many diverse online education offerings. She is passionate about exploring new ways to provide integrative medicine-focused learning to healthcare practitioners and patients. Additionally, she has led efforts at the AWCIM with offerings for the public, the largest being a mobile health app based on motivational interviewing, integrative principles, and health coaching. She also worked the research side to evaluate the use of this app across a diverse population. Most recently, she led the launch of Can Heal, an integrative cancer resource toolkit for patients, caregivers, and health providers. She's a board member for Integrative Medicine for the Underserved, a national nonprofit organization that supports integrative providers of care to those who are under-resourced. Welcome, Molly. We appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I think now more than ever, we need to prioritize self-care and the, and the wellness of our communities. And so thank you for hosting these Wellness Wednesdays. I will now, uh, first I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, let everybody in the chat have a direct link to the mobile app that I'll be talking about. You are more than welcome to go ahead and visit that link and download while I'm talking. I know we're all really good multitaskers. <laughs> um, so that, and that's what will be the, the focus of my talk today. Uh, I just want you to know that it is, it's free to download. Um, it is in English and Spanish. So depending on what your mobile device is set at, it will um, set the localization for the right language. Uh, I just wanna talk a little bit about the Andrew Weil Center for Integrative Medicine, or awesome as we like to call it. Um, and we're, we're really well known for our educational programs. I even saw a few of our alumni in the attendees list. Um, um, and, you know, recently we really have put time and effort into how can we directly support uh, the well-being of, of the public directly. And so this, this mobile app came out of that. So this is not your typical health app. It's not going to count your steps. Uh, it's not going to count your calories. It is a whole health approach to um, support you in guiding you into what you think is most important to um, make behavioral changes around to support your health and wellness. 
Uh, it also provides access to simple but useful inform information around each of these seven core areas of health, uh, which you can see we've got sleep, nutrition, movement, relationships, spirituality, resilience, and environment. And you can see uh, on my um, virtual background is our, our whole health around the seven core areas. And then the main goal of the app is to lead you through to create your SMART goal around a behavior change that you'd like to make and guide you and support you in, in action steps to reach that goal. So the very first thing that you would do in our app is to score your seven core areas in satisfaction. What is your satisfaction in each of these core areas right now? Not what someone else might think, but what you think with one being the least satisfied and 10 being the most satisfied. And I'm actually going to ask all the attendees, um, this will be one of the few moments that I engage you to uh, participate. Use a, a nice piece of paper and pen. You can do this right now. And I want to give you a couple uh, minutes to just go through and write down each of the core areas and note from one to 10, what are you feeling right now? And while you do that, I'm gonna stop sharing this for a second and jump over and give you a little uh, view of what that would actually look like on the app itself. So you can see it's all gray with no, um, see if we can make that work. There we go, sorry. Um, you can see it's all gray with no scores. And then you could choose sleep and there's a little slider bar that'll let you score one to 10 and you see you're feeling at about a six. If you needed more guidance, there would be a link to give you some more information to help you think about it. Like resilience, not everybody is like, I totally understand what resilience is and how I feel about resilience. So you might wanna go in and actually get more guidance on it and consider um, what do you think you're doing well in a core area like resilience or what ways might you improve yourself? Um, we give a little example in all of the areas, we have examples to help people consider their health and wellness with little guides and tips. And so we show how we can improve ourselves. So hopefully everybody's had a chance to go ahead and think about their own core areas of health. Okay, and I'm gonna jump back to my PowerPoint and look to Anne-Marie to see if we're seeing my PowerPoint well now. And then once you've scored all seven core areas of your journey, you'll see on my PowerPoint how uh, you see your score, you get a, a snapshot view of what you're feeling right now about all your core areas of health. And this is to help you think about what area you might want to focus on. Someone might download the app and be like, well, I already know I want to lose weight and I know I'm going to do that by uh, adding more exercise into my weekly routine. And you think, I'm just going to make a, a, a goal around movement. But what we really need to look at is what is happening in your whole health picture um, and what seems to draw the most attention. If you're not satisfied in your sleep because you're struggling to get restful, a restful um, in, uh, sleep where you wake up and you feel like you can conquer the world. If you don't have that, you might not be able to make those movement goals that you want to set. So this is a, a way to look at the big picture and really decide what is the first uh, area you want to focus on. And once you do, get to this point in the app, all the features are unlocked. 
um, addressing your core values, wanting to uh, learn some straightforward information about how to improve your health in these areas. Um, fun interactive quizzes to explore how you're doing um, and where you might be able to improve. And of course, getting into the planning and acting around the SMART goal. So one of the things that makes um, our app uh, different than many is that we really do focus on what matters to you. Why do you want to be healthy? What is, what is motivating you towards making change? And what is really important to you? What, what your healthcare provider is telling you or what your spouse is telling you, <clears throat> they may be what, you're, what you also value, but you might have something else that you think is most important to address. And so we have this heart at the center of our healthcare to address core value questions that folks can answer. Like I said, we have learn more. You can get into different topic areas. So say, for instance, we go into nutrition. We could get into learning about carbohydrates, proteins, beverages. You know, what, what should I know about the vitamins? Um, what about food affordability? What about making time for cooking? So there's all these uh, topic areas, but the, when you get to the actual content, they are short, uh, easily digestible information with uh, links to reputable resources that you could access uh, to learn more, get more tips. Similarly with Explore, we have various topics, but in, you know, some people like to read the manual, other people feel more comfortable being asked questions and answering questions and being uh, directed to more information that way. So you might be answering questions about, you know, before I leave the house, I pack healthy snacks. No, I never do that, or I sometimes do that, um, or most days I do that. And then you'll get some customized feedback based on your response along with some tips. And then here we come to the long-term goal planning and action step process that you would um, apply in the mobile app. So we focus on SMART. We want it to be specific. We want it to be measurable. We want it to be achievable, relevant, and timely. So if you don't know uh, what your behavior changes specifically, it's gonna be harder for you to make the steps, take the steps and know that you're actually achieving it. Um, we don't want you to set a goal that is outside your reach so that you feel uh, down if you don't reach that goal. And then you don't wanna to try to make another goal. So we want that we wanna support you in making a goal that's reasonable but also not so simple that you can finish it in a week. So you know, we want it to take a few months for you to reach that goal. And of course we go back, is it relevant? This goes back to the core values, what's most important to you, why you wanna make these changes. And, um, and timely, we will ask for a, a date so that the system can also support you in reminding you when you get close to that date or if you don't have action steps on a regular basis to support you towards that final goal. Um, but the, the nice thing about this is, well, we might achieve a behavior change, but it's um, most relevant when it becomes a healthy habit. So the app will let you report on your goal, say I successfully reached my goal, and it's going to say, hey, do you want to keep this as a healthy habit that you're going to keep working on? And so you'll have completed goals that you don't need to revisit. You'll have healthy habits that you do want to keep revisiting and keep tracking and keep having that app remind you and support you through that, uh, as well as being able to make new goals. So that is the, the app in a fast 10 minute <laughs> presentation. Um, there are some pieces uh, that I wanna go into about the app design and that you know we um, developed it so that it would be accessible to everyone. So we have this, we have features of the app that allow it to be 
accessible offline. So the only time you need to have a data source or Wi-Fi connection is when you install the app and create your account. Once you've got that, you're logged into your app, you can be offline, you can set your goals, you can learn more, uh, you can explore, you can be um, notified by the app about keeping track on your um, action steps. So the only feature that doesn't work are those external links that take you to more information at, from reputable websites. So folks were under-resourced. We didn't want that, that access to data or Wi-Fi to be an issue. Uh, we also had this written at a fifth grade or lower level. So it, in language, it's, it's accessible and it's available in English and Spanish. And in iOS and Android, which is um, can be quite a feat, <laughs> uh, but we were able to deliver that. Um, and as I said, it's free and I posted the link uh, to the website. So if you do want to install, um, please do. Um, so in 2018, we did a pilot study um, in combination with a uh, federally qualified health center in town. Um, along with some staff and another community um, organization. And we offered it uh, as a, a group that could meet once a week, as well as um, the ability to um, use it independently, because that's one of the designs. So um, the, the group had that additional component of having a health coach there facilitating and supporting uh, they're working through their goals, creating action steps, um, their peers to support them. But we also had success with those independent users who installed it and, and worked through those pieces on their own. And we also got a lot of great feedback on design and delivery. Um, even that we, we did uh, outperform on our mobile app rating scale, which is a Mars validation on um, health mobile apps. Uh, but we learned a lot and we made improvements before uh, the final release uh, in iOS and Android. And these were just some of the um, pieces of feedback we got during our focus group. It encouraged me to get back into yoga. It helped with my diet too, got me below 200 pounds, helped in spirituality to manage difficulties with age and income. Uh, I have a new walking routine and, and going to church more often. Uh, now I have a tool that I look forward to using. I started losing weight because of movement and this tool gave me a little bit more discipline and it's more interesting than Facebook. So I love this comment uh, because I'm sure there are many of you like myself that find it quite amazing how much time we can spend scrolling through social media. And what if we just took five or 10 minutes of that time and focused on our wellness, either through working through an app like this that will guide us to try things, anywhere from mindfulness practices to changing eating habits or supporting uh, relationships that you're in. Um, and, and what, what amount of resiliency and wellness would we experience over time by making those, those changes? I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Um, so the app was developed for everyone. So though we, we did want to test it in a diverse audience to make sure it was accessible across the board. It is not just for underserved. You know, this is information that is that is at the heart of everyone's wellness, and it came from it. It, it was um, designed and influenced by our health and, and lifestyle program and our our health and wellness coaching program that we teach. That's really focused behind um, motivational interviewing that people will, should self-direct where they want to make changes if they wanna be successful at making those changes and how can 
health providers, health coaches support individuals in those explorations and, and behavior changes. Um, so I am going to go ahead and open it up if there's any questions. Um, and I hope that people do get a chance to go ahead and try the app. Thank you, Molly. That was really wonderful. I, I know that the, you know, I have a lot of apps on my phone. I have a lot of different ones that track everything in the world. And this app has been so impactful for me because it doesn't just, most of the apps out there focus on your physical or your nutrition, you know, and it, it doesn't look at that whole body. And so by really taking time to look at all those different core areas has really had a huge impact on how I've handled um, the, you know, changes that we've had and in, in so many different things. And so I think that people really need to take time to explore this app and see how it can help them, even if they're just focusing on one of those core areas. Um, looking at things differently than just how many steps am I taking and what am I eating or what am I eating that I'm not supposed to be eating. So um, we do have some questions. Um, one of them says, uh, why are healthy habits so hard to establish? And how does the app help with establishing those healthy habits? Uh, sorry, <laughs> I was looking in the chat while you were reading that out loud. The, was it the what are healthy habits, uh, why are healthy habits hard to establish? Hard to establish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think, I think there's some aspects around why are we, what are we trying to change and why are we trying to change it? So that's one aspect that we're looking at. If you are trying to make changes because you feel like there's outside pressure of like you're not meeting some standard that you should be meeting, you feel the pressure, but you don't, have the internal motivation, the positive uh, influence to really want to make that change, and then you feel bad, right? So, uh, so much of the languaging in the app has to do with there is no judgment, there is no positive or negative choices, right? It's about really letting the individual sit and think about these big questions about why, what do I want my health for? You know, is it to keep up with my grandkids? You know, that's a really strong motivating factor, but you can't tell someone that's their motivating factor. Like they have to, you know, realize that and come to that and then tie, oh, maybe changing my eating habits will support that, will allow me to feel better, more energized and, and be able to keep up with my grandkids. Um, and I think, not having support to keep up with those changes. So if we're looking at, um, well, I've, I've, I've done this, I've made these changes for two weeks, you know, and I've got all these other influences, uh, time and resources slowing me down, and then I, I stop. I need, I need support. So one of the things the app does is like provide a reminder and a, and a, and a gentle reach out of like, hey, you know, you can do this, let's check in. Uh, it's, it's actually encouraged in the app like to report when you don't make an action step because then there are follow-up questions of like, well, what did you learn from this? And should, should we change the action step? Or do you just need a better uh, contingency plan to set? Um, so I think a lot of this is, is really kindness-centered mm -hmm. uh, on ourselves and literally looking at what do we really want and why do we want to make that change? And maybe what's this, just a, a first step that we can do for that? And I think that's so true that, you know, uh, when you talk about making healthy habits, it's usually always an external reason that's pushing people to make healthy habits um, rather than internal. And that's what's different about this app is it really helps you to look internally and say, why do I want to do this? And what is it that I need to change? And how is that going to help me? Um, one of the questions, of course, was cost, which I think you mentioned the app is completely free. Can you share with people how you were able to, this app is extremely in-depth and it had to have 
had some large costs to it. So can yes. you share with people how you were able to make this and why you made it free? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, like I said, the center's dedication to reaching the public um, started a, a, a number of years ago and um, both through generous uh, um, foundations supporting us. Uh, we, we also ended up, the center really supported the effort uh, because it was, like you're saying, it's so huge. So when people ask, like, should I make an app? I always go like, probably not, um, you know, or, you know, if you are, you know, what are you trying to have that app achieve? Because something as intricate as this, it, it's addressing seven different core areas that there's layers of information and questions and then, and goals and ongoing goals. You could set a goal in each of these core areas you could achieve a goal and then keep it as a healthy habit. So we don't recommend you like, you know, go all force and try to do seven goals at once. One, maybe two, if you're really motivated at a time, but the, the, the functionality is there. And, um, and so, yeah, it was a big undertaking. And uh, my team is super skilled. They're super skilled at online education and delivery. And so, you know, they developed additional skills to be able to learn how to do the app development. But um, I'm so grateful that the center invested and spent the time and effort because I do think, especially because the app is free, um, that it can reach a lot of people and that we're also doing future. We've got, uh, we've got a current research project that's about to start that's going to look at folks with pre-diabetes and diabetes using the app. There are other programs out there who want to use the app in their research programs um, around cancer and pain. And so anyone attending who has ideas for how they might want to implement, you know, a behavior change, goal setting, whole health app within work that they're trying to do in research, we'd love to talk. That's wonderful. And you know, there's so many different components of this app. Could you talk a little bit about the environment core? Sure, sure. Um, so I, I think that's one that maybe people don't normally think about, so. Right. Um, there was a lot of uh, questions around some, like, you know, terminology, too, like around resilience and environment, which is why um, when we went into each area, we were like, we need to define what we mean by environment. Some folks will have, you know, vast interpretations and we want to really keep it. What is it around health and environment? Well, uh, well, we know, especially if anyone's um, aware of Esther Sternberg's work that, you know, the environment impacts our health in many ways. And that can be exposure to uh, toxicants. It can also just be in the sense of peacefulness in your place. Uh, you know, outdoor time decreases stress levels, um, allows for relaxation. I think there's also a deep spiritual connection that can happen when you spend time in nature. Um, uh, but clutter, like what does a cluttered space do to your health? And what would making small changes around clutter impact your health? Um, so it's, it's, the it's a big range, it's a big topic. And we have content vast amount of content, again, in small bite-sized pieces so that people can pick and choose what do they want to learn about and not feel overwhelmed when they get to that page that, that does talks about, talk about like, you know, concerns about clean water. Mm -hmm. There was one other question that, um, could this be something that doctors prescribe in the future as a form of healthcare or wellness prevention? I would assume that the all of the doctors in integrative medicine are certainly using it. Um, what about others? Yeah, I mean, I think there that that's the hope of of a lot of these approaches. You know, uh, the same with uh, our uh, health and wellness coach certification program. We we know how busy physicians are, and even integrative physicians who uh, and clinicians who spend time with their patients and get the whole picture and and talk about lifestyle. There's the, there are the steps that follow up that having someone who's really dedicated or having a tool that's dedicated to helping that patient work on that path, again, a path that they choose, that, they, that they've decided is important, um, so critical. It, there are tools within the app that allow you to share your goal as a PDF 
or in a text or email, as well as your action steps. So if you were working with a physician or a coach or a nurse or someone to help you, you could, sh you could share your goal with them and they could be part of the accountability process, um, which we do talk about in the app. And that's one of the wonderful things about this app. It is so much more than it just seems on the surface. So please, uh, those of you who are listening, take the time, download it, explore it, find out how wonderful it is. Molly, thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking the time out to, to share with our audience. Thanks. Thanks for having these. Sure. Okay. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen real quickly. So thank you again, Molly. I'm, I just think that's a, it is a wonderful app. I highly encourage you to, uh, to download it and use it. So uh, make sure that you get, look at that email that will be going out. There is a link on there to the UA Health Sciences entire virtual calendar. So there's a lot of great things going on out there. So make sure you look at that calendar and check that out. Uh, don't forget, sign up for next week. We have a repeat performer, uh, not a performance, because she's going to be talking about something else. But Cynthia Thompson will be back. She's from the Canyon Ranch Center for Prevention and Health Promotion at our Melanie and Zuckerman College of Public Health. And she is going to be talking about the data on cancer risk and then demonstrate what we know about diet and physical activity that can truly change your risk profile. So really important topic. So until then, on behalf of all of us at the University of Arizona Health Sciences, be safe, be well, and of course, bear down, mask up. See y'all next week.